Earl, it's great to have you back. Welcome. You know, the last Thank time you. we spoke, we were pressing you for like the number of cars and lots because there wasn't a lot of them. Where are we today on inventory? No different than where we were the last time we chatted and not really, really? any different than uh, the position we were in one year ago, surprisingly. So no, no material change. Why is that? Well, demand is just outstripping supply. Uh, you've seen, you just mentioned General Motors. We've seen Toyota continue to revise their production figures down uh, month after month. And uh, there's still a big gap between supply and demand in the auto industry. Earl, let me ask you about this. I saw an astonishing stat earlier today, and help me understand it, 95,000 cars manufactured by GM, but they haven't been able to finish them because they don't have the chips in place to actually produce those vehicles and roll them off the lot and sell them to you and me. So, A, what happens to those cars? I mean, they just sit in a lot somewhere. And then, B, how long do you think it's going to take GM to sort of get through that, get the parts they need, and get those cars out there on the market? Well, other manufacturers have uh, followed that same process for the best part of a year now. And those cars tend to sit uh, in yards either near the factory or near transportation lines. We really don't have many of those unfinished cars on our lots. But uh, the, the car manufacturers tell us that it will be well into next year before next we get year. back into any kind of normal uh, supply rhythm. Wow. Where is that leaving prices, Earl? Where are we on a, a metric that not only tells us about uh, how much affordability there is, but also about you know, the buying power of the consumer, the, the need versus the desire to have these new vehicles? What, are prices rolling over? The prices are still uh, relatively high when you look at historical levels. And, and it's, it's three reasons. Basically, everything's selling at the manufacturer suggested retail price. Incentives that were very common two to three years ago are basically gone. And the mix of vehicles uh, that are being built by the manufacturers are those that are favorable to them, which tend to be bigger, uh, more heavily optioned vehicles. So those three factors have really pushed the average price up in the last two years. What about the used car market? Because that went all out of whack during COVID. It was, we saw this huge demand surge, and you saw used cars selling for prices similar to new cars. Is that normalizing? Where do you think we head from here? I would say it's tempered a bit, but it's still um, uh, out of kilter based on uh, historic uh, pricing levels. They're still high, but I would say they've adjusted a bit. And one thing we have to be careful of is when you get in an economic uh, challenging situation, it'll show up first in the lower priced older used cars. So what we try to do uh, right now is keep our, our used car inventory lean and push that average retail price uh, a little bit lower because there, there are more value seekers in the used car market right now than there were a year ago. So is that sort of a canary in the coal mine for a recession? Watch that used car market? Well, yeah, that, that would be typical in, 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 that, kind of, uh, in that kind of environment for sure.